Uh oh. Today's gospel. So difficult. It sounds beautiful, right? Love your enemies. Oh, all we need is love. All we need is love. All we need is love. Love, love is all you need. Now, for those of you who are young and don't know who, what that song is, you can ask your parents about that one. But this, it sounds beautiful and warm and fuzzy and wonderful. But then, real life hits. And we experience those enemies whom we are called, not even called, not just called, but commanded to love. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. And Jesus didn't just say this once. It, later in the gospel we have, but rather love your enemies and do good to them and lend to expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. That he's saying this to make sure, he is, oh, this isn't just something he's passing over. No, this is something important. Love your enemies. Well, they wouldn't be our enemies if they were easy to love, right? Now, what's an enemy? Not someone that I hate or some, someone that I have something against, but rather an enemy is someone who has something against me, who intentionally is trying to hurt me or is against me. So we might not have anything against them, but they have something against us. You know those people. Maybe they're the people that are constantly backbiting you. Maybe they're the people that are uh, trolling you online. Maybe they're the people that are bullying you. Maybe it's those people that are uh, speaking smack about you at work so that you can, uh, they can get a promotion and keep you from getting it. Whoever they may be, maybe there's someone in our family. And Jesus commands us to love them. Oh, really. When I think about this, how difficult it is. In fact, it's impossible. The good news, of course, though, is that Jesus would not command something unless he were to make it possible. So even the impossible things, like Jesus says to Peter, come, and so Peter walks on water. It weren't frozen, neither. <laughs> so Jesus commands us to do the impossible, but then he gives us his spirit to do impossible things. And you know, as I was praying through this, as I was pondering over this, I really started to think about this and say, why does Jesus command us to love our enemies? To do good to those who hate us? I think, I think it's because when we hold resentment, bitterness, anger within ourselves, it weighs us down. It keeps us from being free. And even, even, he says, you know, expect nothing back. Expect nothing back. That is hard because I know a lot of times, you know, even the people that I might struggle with or whatever, I say, well, I want to try to love them. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to do what I can for them. I expect that there be some sort of conversion on their part. I expect that eventually they will come around and say, oh, well, you're so nice after all. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so sorry, Father Vaughn, that I treated you in that way. Now I know better. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. But when I hold that expectation that what I'm doing is I'm loving them so that I can finally get their love back, I'm liking them so that they can like me back, if I'm doing that and I'm expecting something back, it's holding me prisoner. It's holding me bound. It doesn't give me the freedom that God wants us to have. And so he invites us to love our enemies without expecting anything back. Because in that, if we're able to do that, then we find freedom. 
and we look to Almighty God, we see this is exactly how He loves. He loves us. He loves us even when we give nothing back. And, you know, there are a lot of people I know that they've, they've come to this incredible point of conversion in their lives where they were going along and going along and going along in their own lives and hating God or, or at least ignoring Him. And then they found this moment of conversion and they turned back to the Lord and, you know, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And in that moment, they experience and they say, God loved me even without expecting anything back. But guess what? Even if to the end of our lives we are to reject Almighty God, He will still love us even when we give nothing back. And if we're going to be called children of, our, of the Father of the Most High, then we need to learn to love without expectation without expecting love back from our enemies to be able to let go of those expectations. All this I know is hard, even impossible, without the grace of Almighty God. But the good news is He gives us this grace. We need to cry out in those moments of of struggle, in those moments of resentment, in those moments of unforgiveness, in those moments of pain. And we need to ask God to pour out His grace, His power, His Holy Spirit upon us so that we can have the strength to be able to do that. Just came into my mind the story of my own life. When I was in second or third grade, uh, I was being bullied by um, another boy who, as we would walk the half mile from the bus stop to our, our home, uh, he would be bullying me. And I went with my sister and usually a couple others, but sometimes the bigger kids weren't with us to protect us. And so um, as I would be there, for instance, at this time of year, he'd often throw me into the snowbank and, you know, give me a whitewash and all that stuff. And I remember, you know, at one point coming home crying and my mother not knowing what to do at this point. And so at one, one point, finally, she just said, the next time you see him, Vaughn, just say, I just want to be your friend and go and give him a hug. whatever but you know I was at the end of my rope and so I when he came and he was bullying me I said I just want to be your friend and I gave him a hug he did not become my friend <laughs> but I'll tell you what I never saw him again <laughs> I think I scared him away And Jesus is calling us to love even through the pain. Doesn't mean, I'm not saying that we make ourselves doormats. I'm not saying that we allow people to abuse us. That's not what I'm saying. But love means willing the good of the other as other. I want your good. Even maybe more than you want your good. I want you to flourish. I want you to have the goodness and the love of Almighty God, even if that's not what you want for your life. Willing the good of the other, not for what they can do for me, not for what I expect back, but to will the good of the other as other, for their own selves. May we turn to God in those times of resentment and bitterness and struggle. May we turn to God in those moments when we're struggling to love, and beg Him to pour out His Holy Spirit upon us, who is the very love within the heart of God, asking, us to trans asking Him to transform us and to give us that grace to do the impossible, to love our enemies.